Reverbs and sometimes delays and other time-based effects like that are often inserted on an auxiliary input track so that we can process one or more tracks using sends. Now, in this kind of setup, we can incorporate a reverb in our mix using a send and return configuration. So in Pro Tools, we use sends to route audio from one or more tracks to and through the same plugin inserted on an aux input. Now there's an easy way to do this in Pro Tools. Let me just switch to the mix window. We can do this in the edit window, but I wanna do it here just cause it's a little more easy to visualize what's going on. So here's our vocal track and we have our send fields here. Now I can set up a send to a new unused aux and then I can create a new aux track and then set the input to that aux to be that same pathway and then insert the plugin. But we can do it a little bit more succinctly by using the function here, when we click in the send menu, new track. So I can set up a send to an existing aux if I want to, or a new one. So I'm gonna go new track, and it's automatically defaulting to stereo and aux input. And I can optionally create it right next to the current track or not. This is a small session, so it's not that relevant, but I'm gonna leave it off for the moment. And the time base isn't important, but we can name it, and I'm gonna call it reverb return. And now let me click create. And now look what's happened. It's on this vocal track, created a send, and it's called up a send fader. So when the vocal is playing, I can send some of that signal, and I can send it through the pathway here that's been named. And if we look on the bus, we'll see that it's reverb return because it's been named automatically. And I can, of course, go to my IO setups rather and set it manually. If I go to bus, we'll see that we have the reverb return there at the bottom that's been automatically created. Again, I could go through all this and do it manually, but this is kind of the easy way to do it. So I dial this up and it sends a portion of the signal through that bus pathway, and then it arrives at this reverb return aux that's been created where the input is set to receive the signal from that reverb return. Now this is a small session, but it's gonna grow as we add instruments. And I like to keep my mixer organized. So I'm gonna take this reverb return and just drag it over here, I like to sort of have this represent my signal flow where I have all my tracks, then my returns, and then my master fader or mix bus, and then the master output. And if we switch back to the edit window, we'll see that change is reflected here. And we can easily drag them around here as well and change the order like that. But I'm gonna put it here since the signal flows from vocal to the return to the master to the main output. So I like to have it set like that. So now on here, we need to call up a plugin. And again, I'm gonna go to Avid, and I'm gonna call up, there's several different reverbs, but I'm gonna call up Reverb 1. And again, I'm not gonna go through all the parameters, but we see the same plugin header types here, settings that we looked at in the last video. And I'm gonna go under Chorus, and I'm gonna call up Pitch Chorus Wave. Now here, I want the dry wet mix up at 100%. I wanna hear only the affected signal coming from this return. And then I can blend in the amount of the dry signal by using this fader. Right now, I'm going to hear only dry if I hit play. And as I bring it up, I'm sending to the reverb. So we hear this delay and the compression going through this. Let me just mute the delay for a moment just to really focus on what's going on. I can have less of it or more of it. So I want to have the full Kisses wet level here and adjust the send amount side. with this. So with that done, I'm going to close this window up. We have many parameters that we can explore, but it's beyond the scope of this video. Now here, I can close this send fader up and always get it back by just clicking that to open and close it. And let's say I have another track, maybe a Rhodes piano, and I want to send to that same reverb. I can easily just option drag this down and then it'll be set up to send to that same reverb. So it's a great way of sharing resources where we have one common reverb with several instruments feeding into it. Now, just one more word about this send strip. We can have this in pre-fader send mode or post-fader send mode. And let me just switch to the mixer so you can see a bit more clearly what this means. When it's like this without this button lit up, it's in post-fader mode. And what that means is the level of the actual fader determines the amount that this send is sending out. So if I lower this, it's going to send a lower amount. And if I raise it, it's going to send a higher amount. Ooh, I'm burning up. So there we hear less dry, less wet. It's love time. More dry, more wet.
When this is pressed, we're in pre-fader mode, meaning that this send is constant and it's independent of this. So if I pull this down, we're going to hear the same amount of wet signal. So you can get a reverb only type of effect like that. I'm going to leave it in post fader mode for now. And then here we have the ability to have the fader follow the main panning. So if we, let's say I click that on and I decide to pan this a little bit, you'll see that this is grayed out and just following it versus being able to pan independently on the dry signal and the wet signal. I'm going to leave that off for the moment. Now, one last little adjustment I want to make. When this return was created automatically, the output was automatically assigned to output one, two, but I want to have it go to this master bus. So if I click here, I can assign there right under the available tracks and go to master bus rather than having to burrow through what could be a potentially long menu. And the other thing I want to point out is that you'll see that this S is grayed out along with the S there and the S there. And that's what's called solo safe mode. And it means when you solo something else, these will remain active and won't get muted. And we can command click to take that in or out of solo safe mode. And that's control click on Windows. And in general, you want your returns like this to be in solo safe mode. And especially the master bus, it needs to be if you're going to hear everything. And the click by default is in solo safe mode. but it's optional and this vocal track isn't. And that's the conventional kind of workflow and signal routing where the actual individual tracks hosting the real parts are not solo safe mode. So you can solo one at a time and solo them and make sure everything in their signal path is gonna be included in the solo. We'll continue with more in the next video.